Hopefully we can end on time tonight. Is everybody ready? There's a lot of background noise. So whoever is not using this. Okay. Hold on, let me do one thing first. Alright. Welcome to the online chapter meeting today. Well, we have a few programs and I think we'll start with the table topic. Followed by three speeches as well as a education from the Better Speaker series. And I think Angela is not in as well, so we shall wait for a while until she comes in, then we'll do the introduction for her. Following that, we will have the speech evaluations and then we'll end off with the awards. Is everybody clear? So table topics, speeches and evaluations. All okay with that? Now, really, are you ready or you are still working on the MRT? Great. Yeah. Are you ready to begin? If yes. you're ready, you may need to start because we're going to start the program by asking our club president, Willie, to present his opening address. So let's hear it from Willie. Three weeks of online meeting have brought many people online. And people from overseas as well, both local and overseas Toastmasters. Many people have feedback to me that they have received very good experience and they like it. We are on the last phase of last step of our Saturday process. We are now waiting for Toastmasters International to give us the status status that will be coming in the coming weeks. Communication, communication of meeting is a new thing for Toastmasters in Singapore. And we hope that we can help people from around the world to, to so called to communicate better. Three weeks, three meetings have passed and I have saw that many people will still have fear speaking of video. Never mind about speaking or video. Most of you have overcome your speaking in a physical club. So whoever is not a member of the online club, continue to attend our meeting and we'll show you the benefit of doing that. Over to you, Toastmaster of the Day. All right. Thank you, Willie, for the opening address. And true, online meetings, we meet people from all over the world from Hong Kong, USA, and even Sweden and all that. Okay, for now, we will start with the table topics, but it seems that Peter is not online yet. Is he online yet? Or shall we wait for one more? Where is Peter? I need you for the table topics. All right. Um, Willie has asked that we'll, there's a change in the program. In fact, we'll start with the prepared speeches instead, then following by the table topics as well as the evaluation. How about that sounds? Everybody is okay? Any indications? All right. So in that case, we will go with the, we will go with the, yep. So there's a change in program and we'll go with the prepare speech segment now. 
we have our first speaker tonight. And oh, hold on, wait a minute. Let me change the thing. Because it seems that the evaluator. So that means um, evaluation for J is Peter. He's not in as well. And hold on, let me just double check. Uh, where did he go? Okay. So we will have CJ to begin his speech. Is CJ okay with it? Okay, hold on. There seems to be some some communication on the chat. All right, but if CJ is doing the speech for now, because um, hold on, let me see. All right, there is a slight change. Um. Evaluator for J is not in, Peter is not in as well. So timer, we will wait for a while. It's timer as Jero is also not in at the moment. So we can just rotate it in a bit, so no worries. Um, but shall we get, shall we get CJ to get ready? Dennis, you are the evaluator for CJ, right? Dennis, you're the evaluator for CJ, right? All right, that's good. Now, CJ, are you ready to begin? Okay. CJ will be doing his speech from the Innovative Planning Pathways, and it's the project, it's called the PR uh, Public Relations Strategies. Can we have Dennis to read out the purpose statement? Okay, uh, CJ is supposed to present a public relations strategy for any group situ or situation, and he's to share some aspects of the relations strategy. The speech is supposed to be organized about a real or hypothetical public relations strategy. The speech should be inf informational, but may include humor and visual aids. The speech should be engaging, and the speech should not be a report on the content of the public relations strategy report, and the time is five to seven minutes. All right, thank you. Let me just see. Hold on, let me just engage and lunch a bit. Right, the speech timing is actually uh, five to seven minutes. And here will be the intro for CJ. CJ is an IT project manager by profession, a person who enjoys traveling and volunteer work. He is also a polygot, enjoys speaking six different languages and passionately interested in other people and cultures. Title of his speech is PR Strategies. CJ, if you're ready, you can begin. Um, CJ, there is no sound from you. Sorry to interrupt you a bit. There's no sound from you. You need to unmute. Yep, there is no sound coming from you actually. So you try again. Uh, 
Hello, can you hear me? Can't hear this one. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, I think you're online, dear. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but I need to have my presentation there. Well, where is your presentation? Turn this off so we can talk without being heard. Yeah, okay. this, this is from the icebreaker for the CC manual. Uh, hang on, uh, let me open up my handphone. All right. Jay, just give me uh, a few more seconds. Uh, drive is opening up. Sure, sure. This is from the CC menu, is it? Yes, this is from the CC menu, correct. Oh, okay. Then I know. I don't have to look at them. I don't have to look at it. Uh, so for project one, icebreaker, the CC menu. Uh, to begin speaking in front of an audience uh, in order to find out uh, whatever skill set that you may have and then to, um, to improve on that. Okay, yep. the timing will be four to six minutes. So, Gerald, four minutes is green, five minutes amber, six minutes will be the red 30 seconds to wrap up. And here's an introduction for Jay. Jay is a Toastmasters from India and is a member of three online and an on-site club in India. He is now pursuing his CC, com Competent Communication, as well as Competent Leader without credit after his three half ways half. And if you're ready, Jay will begin his speech with his title, Jay and Mastery in Service Tools. So if Jay is ready, take it away. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and uh, dear guests, if there are any. My name is Dhananjay Parke. I'm called Jay. To talk about a little, a little bit about my family, uh, we are a nuclear family. I was born in a poor family. Father was a clerk. My mother was a teacher. I lost my father at 12, and uh, I had to start working with menial jobs, labor jobs. And that taught me something which is most valuable, which is dignity in labor. Nothing is inferior when you work. And uh, that was the beginning of my learning. And learning never ends. I had no siblings, fortunately or unfortunately. But then I was pushed into speaking at the age of five by my mother, who was a teacher in my school. I was a good meritorious student, did well, and uh, I'm an agriculture graduate. I post graduated in economics, and uh, after 14 years gap, I went for management studies in the evening college. I worked in a bank, my first job in a village. I stayed in a hut for three years. Then I changed to sales and started selling fertilizers, then sold chemicals. Then I joined uh, a logistics firm called TNT, which is now taken over by FedEx, and rose to become their country director for CSR, public affairs, security, and integrity. I retired in 2012, early. In two, year 2000, I had started teaching in a business school and that continued for 15 years that was my giving back to society i was not charging anything for that i had a short stint as a entrepreneur i failed as an entrepreneur for three years and uh, failed miserably but then that taught me a few lessons and i started mentoring some of the startups and small and medium enterprises I'm a certified excellence assessor for European 
foundation of quality management i am also a non executive or independent director certified in india to work for listed companies my stint with those masters began rather late because i never came to hear about them for many many years so while doing speaking public speaking elocutions debates corporate training and many other types of speaking as a keynote speaker panel chair i never had a formal speech training and then one day i was mentoring somebody last year who was a alb als speaker she was a district champion uh, of north and east region and then she introduced me to toastmasters my journey began in year uh, last year in september i i was on a fast track and i wanted to learn and fill all my gaps especially the voice mod modulations tonality and voice variations the second was also about body language because when you are in a corporate you have a very captive audience and what i wanted was to captivate the audience make them listen to me and remember me and i was told that toastmasters is the best place to learn the art of speaking art of public speaking and i was not wrong i joined a club i was lucky to get a lot of speaking slots i am also very lucky in last 14 months i got many mentors uh now i have a fourth mentor here in this club and uh, that's one of the best assets that you get in those masters that that continues the learning process as a mentor i intend to use my toastmasters learning to teach students of 6th and 10th standard where i am a mentor for change and in in that journey i feel that i can contribute a lot by making the students and small entrepreneurs the ability to pitch the ability to speak well and that's my take away from toastmaster so what is mastery in servitude it is a learning i had from my first saint guru who taught me that service attitude is something which will help you to attain mastery so at this stage of my life when i am 66 years old i choose to give back to society freely all the learnings that i do i share that knowledge freely that is all about me and we will come to know later i have just joined this club and uh, i hope to have more interactions with all of you thank you over to you thank you jay and it's true mentors help a lot in toastmasters journey now we will hand back to cj who will begin his speech i think he has solved his uh, mic issue so if cj if you're ready dennis very ready cj will begin Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, CJ. What's you want CJ timing? CJ's timing will be five to seven minutes. Okay. So five minutes will be the green, six minute amber, and yeah, I'm using yeah. this. Uh, I'm using this software. Alright. So, uh, seven minutes will be the red, and thirty seconds to wrap up. So CJ, go ahead. Hi, fantabulous Friday, fellow Toastmaster. I am going to share with you the secret of public relations strategy. Last year, I was being assigned the VP education for my Topayo Toastmaster Club, and we have around 50 plus members in our club. And this year, I decided to take up the challenge of being a VP public relation. Actually, I do not know anything about PR. I know nuts about public relation, but I just took on the challenge to be a VPPR. So there are some of the publicity that 
I make on the social media. First, for any event, we will usually have a banner to hang up outside the community club. This creates awareness to the public and people who walk past will find interested for our event. And in our website, you can see that for every chapter meeting, we have a very nice poster that is done up and uploaded to our website. So for our chapter meeting, we have twice a month. So times 12, 12, 12 months in a year, that means you, I have to come up with 24 pages, 24 posters, just before the club started the new year. So for me, I'm very kiasu. Kiasu is a Singlish word that means you want to uh, do something first without waiting. You want to finish everything first. So I quickly completed 24 poster, much to the shock of the EXCO team. Then for us, we have a website, which is very informative. We have all the pathway information and the schedule of our chapter meetings. And we also con uh, put the EXCO team members inside the web so that to know, let people create awareness. For Facebook, we have a page which we have about 400 likes in and in these four months i travel around to about more than 10 clubs a month and i started to grow and know more people networking and i started to make the likes from 400 to 800 800 likes for my club now so for our facebook we also have pictures of the meeting for every meeting we have the nice videos if Recently, we have a tortue contest and I actually uploaded the winning champion speech on the Facebook to create more publicity for my crowd. And nowadays, the youngster nowadays, next generation, they don't use Facebook. So we also have to have another Instagram to cater to the young audience. Like my daughter, they don't go to Facebook at all. They just go to Instagram. So we must also have Instagram. And other apps that we can think of is the Eventbrite, Meetup, and I even have a Google business account to publicize my club. But out of all these methods, the best method is actually through the word of mouth. That means if your friends can recommend their friends, or maybe the husband can call the wife, the boyfriend can call the girlfriend, so you can see that the word of mouth spread very fast. If your club is full of energy and vibes, the good words will spread to other clubs. For YouTube, I also upload those speakers and evaluators for my club. I do video recording and I try to post it to them after I send a personal link to them so that they can reflect on the video and see what they can improve over the year. I can also give valuable insights to them on how to improve to be a better speaker. The best we use for communication is using this telegram. Telegram is good enough because the size of members can be larger than WhatsApp. And the amazing part is even if I joined one year ago, I still can see the history, all the history of the files, the pictures, and the videos that we have shared like two or three years ago. We can also assess all the old materials. I ever encountered a small and shy girl who has not come for any of the chapter meeting in Topayo, but I was surprised that she actually paid online and signed up as a member. So the public relations is very important in order to make your club to a higher level. So ladies and gentlemen, it is the vibe that counts in your club, the energy and positive. You must make your environment. My favorite quote is from Sir Martin Luther King. What are you doing for others? Focus on people and your public relations will boom. Over to you, TMD. Thank you, CJ. Yes, it's true. How much 
promotions work we done, word of the mouth is still the best. Sometimes people come in, they say, oh, I heard uh, about this from this person and all that. So word of the mouth is still the best. And now that we have finished two speakers, we'll hand it the time to Willie. So Gerald, are you ready to do the evaluation for Willie? Willie, really, really? are you ready? Yes. Willie, really, really, I was not online. Yeah. Sorry? I was not online for Willie's speech. Huh? Willie's speech, he hasn't done yet. Oh. He hasn't okay. done yet because just now CJ has issues. So you move to Jay, now back to CJ, and now to Willie. Oh, and okay. Wait, wait, wait. Let me know down so... the timing first. Give me a minute. Let me clear yep. the timer. That's good. Sure. Uh, five, two, wait, five. Let me find the way. Okay. Uh, Jay's timing. I have CJ's timing. Okay. Okay. Good, all are uh, all clear anyway, so both of them are okay. Okay, so Wait, we give, have... me give me a while, let me get my notes to stand by. Okay, you have the evaluation form. Mm -hmm. That will let be me... release project is actually from the visionary communication path. Okay. And that will be the evaluation and feedback first speech. Evaluation and feedback first speech, okay. I know what to yes. do with really. it. Okay. Uh, All right, so before we begin, yes, uh, Gerald, can you read out the purpose statement? Before purpose I do statement. The okay, wait, let me pull out from Dropbox the purpose statement. Yep. Uh, okay, let me have, I should have it in my phone. Okay. Give me a sec, let me find it. Uh you know people to portraits. This is the his visionary communication VC. VC. Okay, I might have can just pull out from any any part first. Uh. Any part I might have taken out. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see where they put it. Halfway with no, I have taken out of my job box. Okay, never mind. Let me go into the the group chat and pull out. Okay. Visionary communication. I should have it here. I might have took out because of my completion of DL. Uh, okay. Evaluation and feedback part one, right? Yep. Okay, so it's the first part. Oh, this is evaluator speech. Wait, uh, let me move to the next file. Okay. Purpose statement. The purpose of the well, this project is the member present the speech or any uh or any topic or receive feedback and apply feedback to your second speech. Uh, the purpose of this speech is for a member to prepare and receive a feedback from the evaluator. All okay. right. Thank you, Gerald, for the purpose statement. Now, before we really begin his speech, let me introduce him. Currently, he is the club president of Fortune Toastmasters in Singapore, as well as the incoming club president of Singapore's first online Toastmasters club. He works as an IT service delivery manager in one of the tech giants in Singapore. He joined Toastmasters since 2003 and has since returned to Toastmasters to continue his journey in communication and leadership. Mm. His timing is the same, five to seven minutes. Sean, can you do the timing for me? Yep, I'll do the timing, no worries. Mm. Go ahead. So, Willie, if you're ready, you can begin your speech with the title, Why do you need to have a process in life? Take it away, Willie. Willie, you need to unmute. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, fellow Toastmaster and guests. Can I have a, sh have a show of hands who, who, who do this based on request means what you like to do you just do george can i ask you a question 
Yes. Do you, do you like to do uh, something every day the same or do you prefer to do it the same and I mean different every day? I like to have a schedule and I like to have uh, habits and rituals. Okay. How about you, Trisha? Would you like to wake up doing something that is you have planned for or do you prefer just wake up and do what you like to do first? I do tend to have pretty much a very boring routine where I have the same breakfast every day. It's just more convenient because I know I have the staples in my cupboard and I don't have to go shopping as much. Okay, thank you. CJ, what about you? You are a project manager. Do you like to do things with no schedule or you prefer to do things with a schedule? Feel, you feel to plan. So I always go with a plan. Okay, thank you. I'm going to hit 1,000 likes in Facebook. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Singapore, most Singapore just wake up in the morning, they go to work, and then they come back after work and sleep. And then the next, next, next time they, they wake up, it's the next day to work again. It's a cycle for them. Some of us who are running some business or all, we like to do, we don't like to plan. We just feel, actually, two parts. We like to, we plan for those things that we have with customer. For those things that we don't have entity, we like to, we go like to plan. We just want to be free and easy. Why I have choose this topic is because I, in my job, I'm a process manager, okay? I have to write processor, understand what is the problem, fine tune the processes and activate the process and ensure that it works for everyone and people are comfortable. But I, I just tell you something, people go like me to prepare for what they do. But remember, what if you have 1,000 devices you have to manage? What if the clubs, many of you are Toastmasters, so I just relate something about Toastmasters. Many of us, we have, we are a member of two or three Toastmasters clubs. We, 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 do we have the time? Because there's so many activities going on in the district. So what we have to do, we need to plan so that if we, if we don't fail to plan, we overcommit. And when we overcommit, we'll lose, people will lose their trust in me. So we are also, not only that, because we also have a day job. A day job will keep us busy. At Toastmaster activity in Singapore, is it's like every day we have Toastmaster meeting. But sometimes we always say yes, over promise. We end up losing the trust of other Toastmasters. So I ask you, many of you who have, who have been through who, for the last four or five months, you all have understand that I've been doing a lot of changes to the Toastmaster community in Singapore. I received a, many feedback that I really, you did many changes, but we cannot go to your speed that you want. Because we are, we are not your generation. We are on the older generation. People of your generation can follow out your speed. The reason why I have a process is this, those master international have a structure that it, I mean, they have a process we work, but in Singapore, no, not many Toastmasters follow that. And because of Toastmasters never follow that, 
the cup suffer. What about those who who follow who have a structure who follow them, but they end up burning up because they are all, they are the only one doing the work. So fellow Toastmaster and guests, we need we need to think of what you can do and what you cannot do for your club and also for the district. You must have a process of what you need to do. If not, you end up doing a lot, much more, and you end up very busy, you end up messy your life. For example, a poster that I, I, I sent out on a Sunday morning, end up, I received 100 messages for Toastmaster asking about our online club. And what I do, I reply, Every time they ask me one question, I just reply. And after that, I will forward to the same chain of people. And I become a spammer. Spammer means I spam people for and, and up people hit me. So this is why I fail to plan because I never expect the I expect. So remember, don't overcommit and have a process you have. Over to you, Toast, Toastmaster of the evening. All right, thank you, Willie. Now, next one we have is Angela. Angela will be doing from the Better Speaker Series. And I think there's an evaluator for her, right? Or no? Yes, myself. Tisha, right? Yeah. All right, Tisha. So the project is under the Better Speaker Series, Know Your Audience. Do you have the objectives? Yes, I do. All right, can you read it out? Thank you. Yes, this presentation is designed to help others prepare to understand the people for your audience. So this is to help you understand how to connect with your audience. We'll be listening to the speech to see if you're able to fulfill this project. This is an educational project. This is a little bit different from a normal speaking project. All right, so Angela will be doing, like I mentioned, the Better Speaker Series and the speech is the Know Your Audience. So Angela, if you're ready, Yes, I just have one query, which is how I can show you my slides because okay. I've got them on my screen here. Um, I don't know like how the to previous them. one, you need to share your screen. Angela, there's a button on the bottom of your Zoom. It there's looks a like button that we screen. see that there's a share share your button share your screen. What we mentioned last week. Share your screen. The, there's a green button on your bottom of the screen. Oh, yes, yes. The one that one says share. So that's screen. what I'm sharing. Yes, your slides. Yes, that's the one. Can you now see it? Yes, we can. Excellent. Okay, then I'm All right, ready. If you then you begin. And um, so can I just double check your timing sequence? 10, 12, 15? Um, 15? Oh, if, you're, if you're short of time, I can do it in 10. Okay, so it will be... In 9, 10 for her? Or what? Okay, can. Okay. They will be okay. in 9, 10. 8, 9, 10. Right. All right. Okay. Okay, so Angela, if you're ready, take it away. Yes. Fellow Toastmasters and Toastmasters-to-be, the purpose of this series is to help you write a better speech. The first thing you need to have is clarity on what your speech is about, because it's very easy to write a speech and then forget what you're selling, whether it's yourself or something for the audience. And these can be two totally different ideas. Now, my rule is 
that the first thing you need to have is the title of your speech because that gets your mind in focus and I think the audience should know exactly what they're going to get out of your speech by the end of it. For example, a lot of people do a conundrum in their speech title. They think it should be a mystery and that's exciting. I disagree because if I'm paying good money to go and hear a speech, I want to know what it's going to tell me. For example, supposing I'm going to be opposing something. I could be for something like do more exercise or I could be against something such as stop smoking. I think it goes that way up, stop smoking. And I think the people coming to hear the speech should know which of those two things I'm going to be talking about. Well, the first thing you need to do is to get the attention of your audience. Now, what I suggest is that you have a prop which symbolizes the subject of your speech. And I'm using stop smoking as an example. I could have chosen exercise, but I can't really demonstrate exercise when I'm sitting in my chair talking to you. Then you introduce your topic with some surprising fact, such as the number of smokers there are in the year or the age at which you will die, or perhaps even a picture of a lung of somebody who has smoked a lot and has got a blackened lung. And then you establish rapport by asking the audience a question or finding out how many of them smoke or don't smoke or care about other people smoking around them. And your opening should take less than five to ten percent of your speech time. Now we'll move on to the next slide. Whoops. Now I'm I'm moving down the screen on the side, but it's not changing the picture. Can anybody tell me why? Ah, here we go. I got it. Okay. State the importance of your topic, why the readers or listeners should be interested. Well, let's try it on you. How many of you are smokers? Can you raise your hand if you've ever smoked? Can you raise your hands if you've given up smoking or know someone who has? I see lots of people who have no arms. If you don't get a reply, you have to be prepared to just carry on. For example, my parents smoked when I was a child and I think that affected my desire to not smoke because I always suffered from colds and coughs as a child and it affected my performance in school. So then I come on to my next point, which is that you should have a story and a personal story of why the subject is important. You could have a startling statement like smoking kills and more Americans die each year than were killed in the battle during World War II and Vietnam altogether. You could start with a quotation. For example, James II said that smoking was a wicked thing to do. This will add authority to your speech amuse the audience and can dramatize your speech. You could reference the occasion, for example, if you gave your speech on Stop Smoking Day or some other unusual event, especially one that has a common interest. Other techniques, humor. 
You could, for example, say, if I was smoking now, you would not be able to see me because the smoke would be rising up and covering my face. You would give a demonstration of lighting a cigarette <coughs> and coughing away, or refer to a historical event, such as the banning of smoking in France and what a change it made. Other techniques. Things to avoid. Admitting that you haven't done any preparation or that you know nothing about the subject or that it's your first speech. If I got onto a plane with you, would we be happy if the pilot said, hello, welcome to my plane. I'm ever so sorry, but I've never done this size of plane before. I've only been in helicopters. So um, I'll just see if I can switch it on. Would we feel confident? No, we'd be saying, who were? I think I should get off now. Don't be dull and boring. And avoid delaying mentioning the topic and telling your whole life story before you get to the subject matter. Conclusion. A dynamic beginning is essential for a successful speech. So beginnings are most important. If you remember your beginning, it will give you confidence. And try to match your beginning to your ending so that it's sometimes called bookending. You can imagine my hands now are the bookends. You opened with a title and you end with a title and they match. And the listener or watcher feels that they've gone round and the whole speech is completed because your beginning and your ending match. So now I have told you all about beginnings. Perhaps I should tell you the most dramatic speech I ever saw. Man told us he was going to tell us about his struggle to lose weight and he started off the size of a Michelin man in a huge puffer jacket and through the speech he took off one piece of clothing after another until at the end he had shrunk down and had shown us how he had succeeded in losing weight. That was very visual. So I am going to end with showing you my picture of stop smoking. If I were giving a speech on smoking instead of beginnings, this is how I would end. Please, please stop smoking. Don't die of smoking like my grandfather did. My father gave up smoking and he lived to 94. My mother gave up smoking and she lived to her 90s too. And I haven't even started smoking. I want to live to my 90s. Are you going to live to your 90s? And are you going to make sure that your children don't start smoking at school. Always remind everyone in your family how important it is to look after their health and not smoke. Now, you see we've come round from the beginning to the ending. Always remember your beginning and your ending should match. You should focus on your message and then your beginning tells you where you're going and you end up in the right place where you have a message, something that you care about and something you think will help the audience. I shall come back next week with the second piece of instruction and advice from the Better Speaker series to help you improve. Thank you. Thank you, Angela for the speech and yep, we do really need to know our audience and our speeches as well. Thank you. So now, Gerald, can I have a timing report? It will be flashed on the chat. Give me a while. 
Okay, uh, Angela, you can stop sharing the screen also. Mm. CJ is... Ah, where's my notes? Where's my note for CJ? Ah, wait. How do I unshare? I've got everything... At the top oh, of your... I've got it. It's a little red thing at the top. Yep. Uh, that's it. Yep, that's it. Correct. CJ is 5 minutes 55 seconds. J took about J took about five minutes plus or so. J is five minutes and forty-five Okay. All qualified for voting as far as my 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 timing recording is confirmed. Um uh, release timing would be six minutes forty-nine. Mm. Okay, so that will be all there. Okay, so those who hasn't vote, please do the voting now. And once you have finished, we'll go for a five minutes break. And then we we'll come back with the tables topic session by Peter. <coughs> All right, sounds good. So now on my clock is 11.13 p.m. We'll come back about 11.18. Is that okay? If all okay, then we'll take a break for five minutes and then we'll be back. Alright, if you want to stop the video, you can just stop share, uh, showing the video and then we'll be back. Thank you. Achan? Yes? Uh, I don't have the work button in my post. Eh? Work button in your host? My poll, poll, polling, polling, for voting. Uh, it should be in your screen at the moment. Polling yes. right now. Uh, I can't also. That means you have to ask Willie already. Willie? Never mind, I'll try it. Never mind about this. Okay. Alright. Okay, so then we'll it. just go for a break and then we'll come back in about 11.18. Okay. Be right back. Thank you. Peter, are you ready to do the table topics? Waiting for Peter. He hasn't got his mic on yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Here. I need to get my screen uh, shared. Okay. Okay. If you're ready, table topics time is all yours. Twenty minutes. It's all yours. Uh, what screen do you see? Your. I just see your your screen. I don't see any. Yep. Okay. There you go. Is it the uh, PowerPoint slides? Yes. Keynote, Peter. This is Keynote. It's not uh, PowerPoint. This not this yep. Keynote. Keynote. Yeah, it's Keynote. Correct? Using on Keynote, right? Yeah. Okay. Waiting for you. Timing. Do you, uh, maybe I'll announce the timing sequence for you. Okay, hey. fellow Masters of Online Toastmasters Club. Uh, today, I'm your Toastmaster of the or Table Topic Master of the Day. And uh, the timing sequence, as we all know it, but since uh, on the request of Gerald, we're going to repeat it one more time. At the okay. end of one minute, which is your qualifying time, the clock will turn green, right? Yes. Or rather, yes. The, iPad. You guys the, iPad will, the iPad will the show iPad green. The iPad will turn green. Yes, correct. At the end of one and a half minute, it will turn amber. At the end of two minutes, it will turn red. And thereafter, you have 30 seconds to wrap up or you will be... What's the... What's the what are you using to buzz them up? There's no buzzer. Yeah. So, so you shout la, turkey, turkey, turkey la. <laughs> okay. Uh, there will be a buzzer la, somehow. I'll find you a buzzer. Okay, so if you're ready... I will unmute and Peter will be controlling for now. Right, instead of spending time waiting for everybody to raise their hand and volunteer, so I'm just going to quickly run through that today's topic, we prepared 20 topics and the numbers will 
will be gradually, from the smaller number to the larger number, the, the complexity will gradually increase. All right, choose a smaller number, be the first one to choose, then obviously you will have an easier topic. All right, so the tips has been given to you. Um, please start choosing. Uh, Peter, I do last uh, because I'm timer. Uh. Give me the, the, the biggest number at the end, okay? Okay. Okay. So I see uh, Jay raising your hand or is it scratching your head? Okay, I consider that raising your hand. All right, Jay, you want to go in number one, right? Hang on. Can we unmute him? Okay. okay, this is done. You want table topic one, Jay? Yeah, sure. Okay, table topic one is, we are talking, we, we need to learn some new language every day. And today in the small numbers, we're gonna learn how Melania speaks in acronym. So when Melania speaks about ATM, what do you think it represents? And tell us uh, what is ATM to you? And we'll review the answer for ATM at the end of your speech. So your time is between one minute to two minutes and 30 seconds. You may start now. What does ATM mean to me? Millennium, as the screen shows, could be at the moment or any time money. Being a mentor, I face this issue of my mentees calling me at any hour, odd hours, morning, evening, night, midnight, you name it. And then the whole meaning of ATM changes from my perspective to any time mentor. And that's not a happy sign. Fellow Toastmasters, anytime mentoring can be very dangerous to your own health as well as to your mentee. Because if you get a fit of anger, if you are woken up in the midnight, what would you do? You yourself don't know what will be your reaction. So being a professor, I coined many, many acronyms. In this case, I give you one, which is called CAP. CAP is for table topics. And it means common sense, alert response, and presence of mind. That is all about table topics. Thank you. Over to you, table topic master. Thank you. And a uh, round of applause for the first attendee. Next, um, I'm going to pick if nobody raises a hand, okay? Anybody who's next? Topic two. Oh, by the way, I'm supposed to review the answer. ATM to the millennium means at the moment, yeah? Peter, you need to change your slideshow format. Uh. Your keynote uh, is, giving, is showing all the answers. Uh. Is it? Yes. Where does your... it show the answer? Yes, you show your next slide also. Oh, is it? Uh, sure yes. Right. Yes. Okay, okay. Can no. you do some rectification? You show, you show slide, use po uh, power, I mean the viewer only. Yeah. Then below, below there's a viewer. Go to the first slide, slide four. Slide four, oh, hang on. Uh, let me go back to zoom first. Oops. Here's my zoom screen now. Must okay below there's a return to table topic list. Oh, it's on the top now for me. Mm. No. no, he's using a uh, keynote now, uh, bro. No, I haven't. I'm having two screens, so I'm gonna go back to the other screen first. Or you have two monitor. Yeah. Then go back to the slide four. Now my zoom screen disappeared. Okay, I'll share and share again. Okay. 
Let me let me activate. Unshare, unshare. New let share me, or unshare? Let me override. Let me override. You should you should be kicked out already. Okay, done. Share again. You share again. Hang on, let me open my uh, keynote first. Open keynote again. <coughs> uh, you should share desktop too then. Okay. Uh, share the right screen. Uh, yeah. Ah, correct already. Okay, good. Then we turn to table. Ah. Uh, ah, okay. Now working really. Yeah. Okay. I always use this read. All right. Uh, who's next? Angela. Make sure the mic is on mute. Okay. All right. Okay. Table, table topic two. Um, Malinia, when they speaks about BFF. Uh, what does it mean to you? We'll review the answer after your speech. Your time is one minute to two and a half minutes. Let me start now. Well, I could think of two things. One is before something something, and the other is boyfriend something. So I'll go for boyfriend because millennials are always talking about boyfriends. On the other hand, they're also giving little messages about why they can't talk to you or why they want to talk to you or when they're going to be back soon. And there are so many different ones I like. There's one that has a T in it, which is thank you. And very often I feel I should go onto the list and look them up. But when I think of all the things they could say, I can usually work it out. So let me work on, oh, it means best friends forever. <laughs> well, this is very enough. positive, isn't that? Yeah. Absolutely. CR8, well, what does that mean? No, 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 no. we're going back to earlier. Uh, I accidentally clicked on it and it went to the next slide. Okay, we're still on BFF. That's your topic. Be, be best friends forever. Typical exaggeration, but it's, it's positive, it's happy. It's much better than um, horrid words like bestie, which don't exist and should not exist. So best friends forever is lovely. It's positive, it's happy. I'm not sure what the answer is. Perhaps um, me too, or yes, I agree, or the, the best thing is you can reply with little signs you can, I only just found out how to do this. You, you spin down to the happy face, and you click on that, and then you get dozens of little signs and you can do the, the big round one, with the which means and all the different funny faces. And then there's a and there's and there are hearts. So I think if you're going to do best friends forever, you should add on hearts, hearts, and a whole row of little hearts. And you could add in a, a cocktail so that you're drinking a cocktail because you can offer people cocktails on the internet. It doesn't cost you any money and you don't get drunk. And equally, you can be best friends forever. And who knows what will happen because it's very hard to be best friends forever when you've got 2,500 people who are all best friends. But you can be best friends with all of them forever. So, we please remember, I'm your best friend forever. And this goes to Shan Chan, Peter, Naveen. I've got to run down the screen. Thank you, Peter. Oh, and Peter is giving me signs. Yes, the important thing is to remember which way around the sign goes. But if you if you oh, signs, oh. you're okay. So best friends forever. Maybe we, having met here today online, will be best friends forever. I hope so.
Ms. Ann? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, who's next? Ah, uh, who's next? Who's the next Naveen? one? Naveen, would you like to attend the next topic? Naveen, you got to unmute. Okay, yeah. yeah, can you guys hear me? Yes, can hear, can hear you, but we can't see you now. Okay, let me see if I can. Okay, uh, can you see yes, me now? Yes, I can hear and see you now, I think. All right, thank goodness. All right, what, what do you got for me? Um, between one to 10, choose one. Uh, from three to 10, actually. Hmm. All right, I'll just go for lucky number seven. Number seven. Number seven, table topic number seven is to express your opinion on this quotation. All right, get ready for this quotation, Navin. And the quotation is, All right. investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. And investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. The time starts All right. now. Investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. That is an interesting topic indeed. True and false. Because when you invest in knowledge, yes, it does pay dividends. But what kind of knowledge? You have to look at it in different ways. You have uh, knowledge that is very general, generic knowledge, which you can use in everyday situations like problem solving. How do we solve um, problems? Logic, mathematical problem solving. With that, you can use it across the board in uh, management as well as in technical fields as well as the medical field. But if you're talking about very specific knowledge, which is very specific, like say for example, uh, polymer, polymer science, but you, you specialize in a very niche field, that is going to be a very niche thing. And it depends on how many people, or it depends on whether the industry has that amount of uh, job work expectancy opening. So it always depends. It's not a hard and fast rule. But let's stick to the knowledge, the basic stuff. So once you master the basic stuff and you master it well, you can use it across the board. Thank you, fellow Toastmasters. That's all I have. Thank you, Naveen. And that was Naveen sharing his opinion on Investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. Moving on, we have we have another seven more topics from one to ten. This from one to ten are the easier topics. So who's going next? Hello, who's going next? I can only see a limited number of people here. Peter, this is Trisha. I'll go next. All right, cool, Trisha. Between uh, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, choose one. I'll choose seven. A seven is chosen by. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Three. I'll choose six then. Six. All right. Six is. Oh, it's another millennial speaks. <laughs> uh, when millennial says YOLO, what do they mean to you? And uh, your time is one minute to two and a half minutes. And it starts. Uh, Gerald, are you ready? Timer. Timing. Timer. Yeah, timing. Timing is ready. Waiting for her to speak. Okay. Yeah, Joan is the next one after Trisha. Take note, Peter. Okay. Mm. <coughs> it's time starts now, Trisha. Yeah. Okay. And you're ready. I was. You're ready. I was ready. Okay. <laughs> you're ready. All right. Okay. Ready. Okay. Timing is position. You need YOLO! To... I know this terminology even though I myself am not a millennial. I have millennial brothers and friends. It stands for you only live once. I don't actually believe in this credo because I don't believe you only live once. 
you see, I have been saved. I've been saved from my Savior. And I believe that when I die, I will live again in heaven with Jesus. So I don't think that you only live once. However, I do believe that while we're on this earth, it's very, very important to treat others as we would like to be treated. Because each life matters immensely. I feel that, that each life that we live must be li lived to the best of our abilities. And that we shouldn't waste time on frivolous activity. It's fine to have fun every once in a while. It's fine to go on vacations, that kind of thing. But I think a lot of your time and effort should be put on others. The more we do for others, the more we receive in, in return. And this is my belief. You don't have to share it. Maybe you only live once, but I will not. Back to you. Thank you, Trisha. And round of applause for you. John, John is ready, right? After Trisha, John, uh, can you unmute yes. yourself? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, uh, do you want to stick to topic four, five, eight, nine, ten, or you want to move on to 11 to 20, which is more complex? Mm. I can go for the more complex ones, I'll try. Okay, 11 to 20, select a number. Mm. 17. One seven, 17. Eh? 17. Table topic number 17 is to continue with or complete this sentence, whichever way you like. That's one week of holiday between Christmas and New Year. That's one week of holiday between Christmas and New Year. The time. One minute to two and a half minutes, you may begin now. There's one week of holiday between Christmas and New Year. And I would like to spend my time with my family. So this is the way I would like to complete this sentence. The reason I say is because that time between Christmas and New Year is so precious to just bond and relax and to connect with each other. People, uh, we all are in festive mood and we want to keep that spirit up. And uh, this is why, you know, this time was given for us by the Lord to spend time with each other and connect. It's very peaceful, very spiritual, very holy time. Uh, and uh, that time, and I firmly believe that this time need to be invested with your, with your loved ones and reconnect for the new year. So I would like to complete the sentence by saying one week of a holiday between Christmas and new year. Uh, I would encourage everyone to spend their time with their family. Back to you Toastmasters of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joanne. Ross, for you and Timer, what are you trying to do, Timer? <coughs> Wait, uh, you need to reset. Uh. It's, it's one minute and eight seconds. Yeah, one and eight only. On wait. Okay. Okay, ready? Who's the next one? Somebody. I can only see all the faces I've seen is already gone for it. Shan Shan, you want to attempt, Shan Shan? All right. I'll go for the easier one. That means it's. Four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Uh, sorry, uh, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. I go for number eight. Number eight. Number eight is express your opinion on another quotation, and this quotation is: "Design is not how it looks like or feels like. Design is how it works. Design is not how it feels, looks like, or feels like. Design is how it." works. Time okay. starts now. Design is not how it looks or feels like. Hmm. Okay. 
have thus any bird okay uh in singapore there is a condominium that it stacks up like a lego anybody know where is that is yes Tolo blanca heights area yeah i've been looking at it from my from my window since it's built because it's very nearby me and every day i was like wondering how is it going to be built? Because it's stacked up like Lego, seriously. The, the way they stack it up is like, this building, on top of this building, on top of this building, they stack it up. I was like, it doesn't really look like a condominium to me, which in fact, it is a condo. So that's how I feel. Design, it doesn't really look and feel how it works. Because ultimately, when you design something, it needs to come up to fruition. Like for example, you can design a car, an electric car, but if it doesn't start, it doesn't work. Why do you design an electric car for? All right. So you need to feel that design is it ultimately works instead of you can design anything out of this world, anything that you can design, but your out of this world design does it really work? That is the main issue. That is why design is not how it feels or how it's like, it's how it works. And that is the reason why I agree with this quotation. Thank you. Back to you, Peter. Thank you, Shan Shan, for sharing with us your opinion on how design works. Uh, I'll just like to add that uh, I, I like the way we really have the design, the whole curriculum for all of us, including sending me this template for the PowerPoint slides for I will take the topic and uh, well, it works. Yeah, it, it may feel raw and simple, but it works. And it, it, it's functional for the user. And that is what design is all about uh, for me. All right, now let's go back to selection of topics and who is next? It's Dennis. Who? Dennis. Oh, Dennis. Dennis hey, yeah. Dennis. I didn't see your face around in because uh, I'm sharing my screen, so I, I, I have to rely on your voice now. Okay, you want to go for? I'll do 11. 11, wonderful. 11. 11. Table topic number 11 is to describe this instrument and relate it to your life. What instrument might that be? Uh, this one should be a. Can you see me? Yes. Okay. I see it. It's, it sounds like this. <laughs> yeah. uh, you All right. Time Mr. You Mr. Table Topic Master. I've seen that thing before and I've heard it before. Unfor I, un I was not in the military, but I know that that was probably used to get certain people up in the morning, whether they like it or not. And it's so loud that you can't, it's louder than your alarm clock, so you had to get up or you would be pushed out of your bed. I also think that uh, it's also used in the evening and the military uses it quite a bit in the flag ceremonies. They would have it in the morning to get you up in the morning, and then they also when they retire the flag. So I haven't seen, heard that before. But it's something that I have not played. I used to play a clarinet, so but I never played a brass instrument. But I do like the sound of a a, a trumpet or a cornet, but a bugle. It's rather harsh, but it does do the job to get you up in the morning, whether you like it or not. So it's something that. You might enjoy if you like harsh things or your alarm clock doesn't work, but it's something that I would not like to hear in the morning. Mr. Talk Master, back to you. Thank you, Dennis. That was a very fast response. A round of applause for you. And uh, since we forgot to give uh, Shan Shan a round of applause, another round of applause for Shan Shan. Okay. Now we're back. So the table topic selection, uh, based on memory, I think I saw, um, apart from Dennis, George. George was around earlier. Is he still around, George? Yes. George. Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> Hi. Okay, make your selection. You have either three, four, five, and nine, ten, or um, 
other than 11 and 17. So it's make your choice. If uh, 13. 13. Lucky number 13 says that you're supposed to describe another instrument and relate that to your life. Um, oh, describe an instrument and relate it to my life. Yeah, this one. <laughs> hey, I used that the other day. <laughs> hey, you may begin now. So the instrument I've been given is the drums, but uh, Peter used uh, a tiny bongo instead. But technically, it's still part of the percussion family. And how it relates to my life? Well, I would relate it to... Uh, the rhythm of percussion instruments. Well, in percussion instruments, it's not just about drums or instruments that have uh, just a single sound. Percussion instruments encompass different instruments, including the xylophone, the group, the different uh, tuned percussion instruments that not just make one sound, but they make many sounds. And Things like the xylophone, they can make very beautiful music, like the opening of the Harry Potter movie series. And I also feel like as a percussion instrument player or a percussionist, it's very important to keep your rhythm. I also played in a band. I played the tuba in a band. And in a band, the person who is most important in keeping the rhythm is, of course, the percussionist either the drum the person playing the drum set or the person playing the snare drum, bass drum, those are the person, the important people keeping the pace, the rhythm. And I believe that all our lives we are keeping pace with something, for something, keeping rhythm of our lives going, whether it's slow or fast. And I believe that having variety and rhythm of our lives, sometimes you go fast. When you're young, in your 20s, you go fast in your career. Then you get to your 40s, 50s, you slow down your pace and your rhythm. And this change of rhythm that I believe brings variety makes our lives not that boring. So this is what drums and percussions means to me and how I relate to it. Thank you. Back to you, Topics Master. Thank you, George. That's a, another round of applause. Okay, back to David topic selection. Uh, who did I miss? Based on memory, we are, I think we're only left with uh, Gerald and Willie, right? Who else is there? Oh, Jay. Jay has attempted already. Um, who else? Hello? Everybody? Scroll down. Angela, Angela, Angela is done already. Angela is CJ, done. CJ, CJ, yes. Uh, you want to select a topic? Oh, oh, back to the topic. You want to know what are the numbers available? Oh, you want to select number three, is it? Yeah? CJ? Is it number three? Can't hear you, CJ. CJ, are you speaking? I think we can't hear you, CJ. Okay, we can hear you now. I can hear you at least. You want to select number three, right, CJ? Hey, where are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, number three. All right. Uh, Peter, time check. You need to cut already. Okay. Hmm. Melina speaks. CRA. What does it mean to you? Your time starts now. CRA to me is like a person 
you're very soft. CJ, you either raise your volume on your mic or you put the mic closer to your mouth. Uh, those who cannot hear CJ, please put uh, put your hands up. Nobody can hear you, CJ. Okay. Do you have uh, any other mic other than this this mic that you're using? What about your direct uh, computer mic, your your notebook or computer mic? Hmm. Is your three point five mm connected tightly or not to your system? We can faintly hear you. Is I think it's certain thing to do with the volume or the mic is mic not. control. Mic controls, I think. I tell you what, CJ, we come back to you. Because you're still uh, checking out on your mic. Uh, let's, let's move on to Willy or Gerald. We have to stop with either Gerald or Willy. The time is running out. Okay. And CJ, we, I'll make uh, some more interesting topic for you next time when I'm a table topic master. Who wants to go? Willy? Willy, Willy. Okay, Willy. Gerald, Gerald, Gerald goes. Oh, uh, Willy, Willy, I say skip. Okay, uh, Shan Shan, you time me. Uh, give me yes, topic 20. Okay. Thank you. Okay, favorite topic number 20. You want to go for the complex one. Hey. Hey, what's wrong? Hmm? What's wrong? You click 19. Uh. Yeah, you what? click on 19, Peter. No, mate. Then you'll go 20. Ma. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Difficult words. Aggrandize. Aggrandize. Gerald, you may begin. Aggrandize. Sometimes I don't understand what is Peter thinking when he comes up with interesting questions from being like boy's friend, uh, best friend forever. And sometimes we see RA, which is cute in a way. And sometimes he is as cute as the aggrandize character of the, of the mountain that, that we can see on hand. Because sometimes I wonder what is going on on Peter's brain when he comes up with difficult words. Are he, is he trying to become a, lang a grammarian? Or is he trying to become a general evaluator? Or is he trying to become a listing master that challenges us our thinking? Or is it trying to be an anaphora? I don't know. God knows what is going on on our table topic master's mind. Because when you aggrandize and you challenge the brain, the brain can come up with all kinds of random ideas such that it's just, just as giving the investment of in the investment of the investment of in the investment of time to get you the investment of the wonderful working brain to get you a successful way of thinking but sometimes you need to count every chicken needs to be working you not the more chicken that you count you get very lost and confused just like how angela was confused by my table topic yesterday i think it's just like how you can in we can vital give them vitality through the tomatoes the with the potatoes and never as don't forget the chicken and the turkey that's always happening around because Life is all about aggrandizing the table topic master. He's the aggrandized, and I can endeavor with the grandeur of becoming the grandeur of the chickens. And I hand back to Peter. Uh, thank you, Gerald, the turkey master, and, and whatever <laughs> other poetry that may come along with your vocabulary. And just in case everybody was wondering why are there a variety of different topics because we have different age group here. So yes, so I thought it may be more interesting when we have a variety of different topics. I hope you have enjoyed the session. Uh, the time is approaching midnight. So I'm going to hand my time back to the table top, uh, the Toastmaster of the day and a round okay. of applause for all of you. Thank you, Peter, for that. Next up, we will have the evaluation segment. So, evaluation segment will start by the. I unshare myself first, right? Or ah, it's really done. 
Yeah, it's very really rough. Okay. Okay, so we'll begin with the evaluation by Dennis for CJ speech. Dennis, are you ready? Evaluation timing will be two to okay. three minutes. Huh? So two right. minutes is the green, two minutes 30 is the amber, and three minutes is the red. So Dennis, if you're ready, begin your evaluation. All right, thank you. All right, CJ, enjoyed your presentation on PR strategies, and I see that you really challenge yourself by moving from the vice president of education to vice president of PR. It's something that all of our groups really need to work on, I think, to make sure that our clubs stay alive because of all the changing membership that we have. You gave us a really long list of different ways that we can use or different types of PR that we can use. And you started with something as simple as a banner and posters and you told us that you liked making those posters and you were ahead of schedule by making all 24 posters almost all at once, which was quite interesting. You then switched over to a lot of electronic media, which I think most of us are more familiar with nowadays, starting with the, the website and then going on to Facebook and Instagram and all those types of things. One of, one of the things I would like to see you do though is you had so many different types of PR that maybe you would, maybe if you could categorize them a little bit for us and starting with maybe the old, maybe call it old school or something like that, where you start with a banner and, and the hard pa paper posters that you would put up all around town and then move on to then something a little bit more modern. And you were introduced by someone who was working on IT and so then maybe you could add a little bit of humor into it that you enjoyed. This is the part that I really enjoyed because it's related to my work or something I like to do and then get into things like Facebook and those types of things, the more of the electronic media. Uh, the other thing that I would like to see you do is also you're supposed to be engaging. And I think the way, one way that you could do that is maybe ask us uh, up front, ask us what, do you, what are your different Toastmasters clubs doing to uh, promote your clubs and then after that and see what kind of response you get and then go on and continue listing the different items for us. Uh, then the next thing you, after you the electronic media, you then went to the best way and the, you talked about word of mouth. And so I think that your organization would be maybe start with the old school type of thing, move on to the electronic media. But then after that, you say, after all of these different things, the best way still is spoken word, word of mouth, friend, face to face. You had a very good quotation at the very end. So it was that part, you had it all wrapped up with the quotation. So overall, you did a very good job in, in putting together your presentation. Just like to see maybe the structure organized just a little bit better, and then you'd have a much better presentation. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you, Dennis. And it's Wonderful for the strategies that uh, CJ can adopt. Next up, we will have Gerald to evaluate on ready speech. Gerald, are you ready? Gerald, are you ready? Okay, sorry, got to readjust on off of timer mode. Okay, I'm ready. All right, take it away. Okay. Good afternoon, uh, really, and fellow Toastmasters and friends. Uh, okay, really had delivered a very interesting speech about why do we need to have a process? He's about talking about process driven, and I'm also generally a process driven person. So, but anyway, let me highlight some points, just like how the how my, my favorite uh, toy here, ch the chicken. So, I'll use the chicken as my. <laughs> my idea of the story and how things can get working together because I'm going to put different things on my table and going to evaluate you. So first, what did call us attention like this chicken? Okay, We always like this, this beautiful toy that I always use in all my workshops and all my evaluation is he got us attention because when the, this squirky chicken makes noise, it, it really got our attention. So he was asking three rhetorical questions and he did support with hand gestures that Somehow or another that I know he's on the right track, that he's telling a story here and there and introduce and all that. The next thing that I think I can 
get him to get him working on like is where's my favorite item that I'm gonna pull out of nowhere. Okay. Some of you may have seen this tea light, right? That I showed in a past workshop, right? Okay, uh, and even in contests and all that kind of environment, right? Okay, this is the tea light is to give you the light shining ideas. Okay. How can you uh improvise maybe work on further? Because sometimes you need a hand sanitizer just to get things uh, working. Okay. So sometimes you need to clean up a little bit of things, just like a hand sanitizer. Uh organization, maybe stories, the timing also need to work on. Because sometimes you have a bit of time restriction or trying to re especially both of us came back from the same event together this evening. Kind of a challenge to get our brain sorted, cleared, ready, just to share our thoughts. And some more is a personal story, which is a very good point. The only challenge now is how much do you want to organize your speech at the fastest time? You want to add on a lot of points? And how far can you want to push yourself to speak at like seven minutes and 15 seconds, you can do that. It's just that in a video environment, it's not easy as someone we are just checked from another event. So a dinner event this evening. So sometimes not, you might need to get a, a fan just to cool you so that life can be always be interesting because otherwise, sometimes you need to cool down at a fan. Otherwise, life is always so boring because sometimes you need to put in the, the bullets because every time, in my work of facilitation, you need lots of post-it notes <coughs> just to post it your, your thoughts. Because sometimes when, you brain, when your brain is moving fast and you're trying to deliver an impromptu speech, almost impromptu, but as though it's not, okay, it is to make sure your thoughts and your stories all flow nicely, you like your sound, your personal experience, and get them smoothly together. Because otherwise, you also have a problem. So in conclusion, I would like to say, just work, work on your rhetorical devices, get more points in, just work on a bit of organization and you can do it in good time. And I hand it back to Sean. Thank you, Gerald, about it. So next we have Peter to do the evaluation for Jay. Peter, are you ready? Yes, yes, I'm ready. All right, go ahead. Um, wait, hang on, let me put one on speaker view so I can see Professor J. Ah, there you go, and then my bottom left of my screen. All right, Toastmaster J, do I pronounce it as parquet? Is it, is it yes? Give me a nod. J? All right. Um, Jay, I must say, I totally enjoy your table topic speech. And I wish to say the same about your icebreaker. Um, it is a very well organized icebreaker. There's a 90 second opening structure that detailedly tells us about your history uh, by the point. Like, you were working in the bank, and then you went back to the village to stay, and then you started selling chemical before you, you move into what you were doing most part of your life, what you enjoy doing most part of your life, that is, you enjoy teaching before you come to Toastmasters. Now, that, that's very well structured. Now, and then when you conclude the entire icebreaker, you summarize it with, you know, what it means to you to be able to guide entrepreneurs. That is a very standard open body closed structure that is very well prepared. I'll just like to point out if you allow me, uh, Professor Jay, that if I could recommend that you have a better transition between each of this point, because it sounds more like an interview where you are listing out your resume in the beginning of your speech to us. Um, as I compare the earlier table topic session where you just dive in impromptu this, to describe at the moment, I like that style a lot better, that there's a smooth transition from beginning to the end. Uh, you are I, I believe a, a experience uh, orator already since you've been teaching at schools for the last two decades. Yes, 
last two decades. And, and uh, I thank you for this opportunity to be able to evaluate your speech. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, for the evaluation. And we will have Trisha to do the evaluation for Angela. Trisha? Yeah, there we go. Thank Take it away. Thank you. thank you very much. Angela, beginning your speech. Uh, this is one of the most important things Postmasters, new Toastmasters need to know when joining us because most of them have never written a speech, right? So they're completely lost. They don't know where to start. So thank you for sharing this presentation with us. Some things I saw, both good and bad. First, the good. You use, I, I'm not sure if this was a pre made slide from Toastmasters or if you had created it yourself. But I just want to say that I enjoyed your slides because they have very few points on each slide. So we didn't spend all the time reading the slide. We were able to follow you, listen to you as you were going over the few points on the slide. So I thought that was done very, very well. Some people put so much information on the slides. We don't listen to them because we're too busy reading the slides. I feel that you have a very musical voice. There's vocal variety throughout the speech. It could be very dry and boring as a presentation, but you livened it up with your vocal variety and your musical voice. You even used hand gestures. Even though I kept an eye on you on the side, I saw you using gestures and signs. So you, even though we, most people might not have seen you, I was watching you and I really enjoy that energy that you have transferred to your speech. Now some things I think that you could do to make this presentation even better the next time is maybe include some pictures interspersed in your power presentation. Shock us with a picture of a lit cigarette or statistics of people dying from uh, lung cancer or other cigarette related diseases. Even more interaction with your audience, you did have some. I would like to see even more and in more stories. You're amazing storyteller. You're weaving in these little stories here and there. I just wanted to hear more because you did it so well. And uh, overall, I thought that this was a wonderful presentation. You kept the the PowerPoint presentation slides concise without too much information. You gave great examples, specific examples for each part. Your vocal variety was wonderful, helped us keep us engaged. And you did attempt to, to ask the audience questions, has raised us our hands. And I thought that your musical natural voice led so much to this presentation and kept it lively and entertaining. And obviously it was an educational speech. I, I offer to you, if you private message me your email address, I'd be happy to email the evaluation to you later. Thank you. Thank you, Trisha. And my apologies for the missed up just now. So we will do the voting for the table topics now. Willie, can you pull up the screen for the table topics? Yes, there you go. Um, Jay's um, name is not in. Really, uh, Jay's name is not in. Yep. Team is number nine, one J. Well. Okay. Okay. Remember, one, this is not the official one. I will come out a PowerPoint tomorrow evening. If not, we need to do the Sean. We need to do our usual menti. Ah, we have to. Okay. 
Okay, so if you are done with the voting for the table topics, we will have the voting for the evaluation and general evaluation all qualified? Yes, all qualified. Correct. Okay, including yourself. Yep, all qualified. Yep, so all qualified, yes, correct. Proceed for the best evaluators voting. How come uh, CJ's okay. name is as for evaluators with Gerald? Yeah. Uh, I guess we can may have to switch to menti.com then. Yeah, I had to use menti already. More accurate. All right. Okay. We can cast more votes. Huh? Okay. We need as an error. Uh, CJ's yeah, yeah, name yeah. should be Gerald. Yeah. Number two. Yeah, I will take that. Number two is Gerald. Uh. Those are casting okay. votes. Uh. Yeah. Okay, so if all has done their voting, just give us a sign so that we can get Willy to begin his. Yep, I see most of some of the hands have been raised. That's great. And we shall just wait for a warm up. How do I email Trisha? I didn't see her on my screen. Do you see a polling? No, under chat. Go to uh, go to chat. I'm in. I'm looking at the chat. Okay. Yeah, I'm not on the. I'm not on the chat for some reason. Hold on. Oh yeah. Oh, can I? Am I? I'm not on the chat either. Okay. Uh, Trisha, you can forward to me. I will take over tomorrow. I will. Okay. So have all have been have all done the voting yet? If all done, Willie, really, can you uh, proceed with the closing address as well as the awards? Okay. Today, although we started late, but we still complete the two hours. And I guess I know it's quite late. We, I, can I, before my closing, belong to every one of you okay your is the voice so let us go google roll call of one by one and talk and have a feedback of how i mean how do you find the meeting tonight as compared to the previous three meeting i know some of you only attend one or two but never mind the first person I will go about is Angela. I'm beginning to get more comfortable now with finding things, although it may look to you as if I'm being a bit slow, but at least I know what I'm supposed to do as soon as I'm told to do it. So I'm feeling a lot happier and okay. I'm very, very pleased with it all. And thank you, Willie. Um, okay. It's very this helpful. One, you're sending me the. This, this one is. This one is. Uh, this one is. Gerald. Mm, wait. Sorry. Busy. Why? Okay. Oh, this one. Uh, Dennis. Dennis was working or something. Your feedback tonight. Um, actually, I think it went pretty well today. I, I enjoyed it a little bit shorter format. I, three hours for me is pretty long for a meeting. So I liked it when it's just a little bit over two hours. I think the problem we had this morning, or for me in the morning, when we logged in was I think the start time on the timer maybe for, for, um, for Zoom wasn't set up so that we could log in before the, the eight, or appointed time. So. Uh, we need to probably check that when we set that up so that we can get on before the uh, hour. And, but otherwise, I think we, everything went pretty well, even with the 15 minute delay. Uh, back to you. Okay, Trisha, you are next. Feedback. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, I thought um, even though people were late and people didn't know 
at who was doing what roles in some cases. I thought it all came together seamlessly once everybody knew what they were supposed to be doing. So I just commend you to keep on going. If things aren't perfect, that's okay. Life happens. <laughs> and I thought the tennis master of the day, Shan Chan, you did very well. Keep on keeping on. I was like, okay, well, this person's not here. Or this part is not. We'll just move on to the next part. So I just commend you to keep the the meeting going, even if it's not exactly how it appears on the agenda. And that's that's how we go. When we're Toastmasters, we have to learn to expect anything and everything to happen. So I just I just thought it went very well once it got going. So good job. Okay, Josh, since you are the guest tonight. Hey, yes. Give us your feedback. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm the, I'm the VP of my club and I'm the planner of the program sheet and I'm really amazed at how Sean, Sean did not freak out. Absolutely go bonkers when people are not here. <laughs> and mad respect. Yeah, and uh, I thought the theme topics is uh, the, the way with the PowerPoint slides, how it shows down was very good. But that was executed quite nicely. Uh, I, I'm thinking whether the timer can do a share screen, but I'm not sure how that would work also. But yeah, other than that, I thought, uh, I thought a pretty good experience. Yeah, anyway, I'll be evaluated here next week. So yeah, see you all guys again. Okay, Jay. The third time here, give us your feedback, your your view as a member. I think uh, I will uh, shower praises on uh, the postmaster of the day today. As I mentioned uh, in my table topic also, it was the alert response and presence of mind which impressed me most because uh, uh, there were no role takers available uh, evaluators were not there, uh, speakers were not aligned, but uh, still the Toastmaster of the day actually, uh, you know, uh, she stole the show by her uh, terrific organization and she deserves a round of applause for that. Okay, next, CJ. Can you speak really right, CJ? Can you hear me now? Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry, I was think today I encountered some technical problem. I have to apologize. So for the, today, the TMD is very good and I like the table topic master questions. It's very engaging. So maybe before the start of the event, we can just have a testing of all the equipment and maybe those first cut first timer we have to brief the first timer especially those guests like what to expect during all this and maybe a FAQ guide which I think I can work with you really FAQ guide on this okay Peter 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 okay hi everybody uh, I think the table, as we mentioned earlier, the table topic uh, template was given to me by Willie. It's really very well done. I just need to add a little bit touch to the key, uh, keynote, and it works perfectly. And uh, what I enjoy is what I would rather spend time on is to ask everybody did you enjoy the table topic session? And those who enjoy it, uh, you know, can I have a wave of hand to see if you, okay. Then, then I, I know whether the format works for me. Yeah, that's good. And I'd like to highlight that tonight is uh, Alicia's, I think, what, 28th birthday? Is that <laughs> Alicia? Yeah, shall we sing her a birthday song then? Well, Alicia just came in time. Oh, yeah. So, I'll leave. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Alicia. Wow. Love you guys. <laughs> okay. Okay. My feedback to everyone. Okay. We met it with some technical issue, but we did manage to. Okay. Starting next week onwards, the Zoom number will be uh, the same. I mean, there will be a, there will be one Zoom number throughout the next six months. So there's no change to the human meeting. So like what Dennis have asked, it, it will fix by next Friday. Miss no more different number to dial in. For registration, wise and FAQ, we need to work on that. But because some of the Toastmasters, they are pretty new to online meeting. And we hope that more and more people can enter because yesterday was one of the senior toast the senior Toastmaster birthday as well that fall together with Alicia that most of us was caught in, caught in a time bomb. Yeah, time challenge to hit every to be back here. Yeah. Uh, you, the, want to, you want to do your closing? Yeah, I might, I'm doing my closing. For the timer, George, if you view us as a gallery, you can see the timer. Yeah, but my gallery only four people. That's why I have to swipe. You, have to sc swipe, you are swipe, using swipe. a handful or yeah, using my iPad. Handful. You have to scroll. Uh, but yeah, if you scroll to the first screen, it's the first speaker. Ah, uh, okay. Got it. Ah, okay, okay. You got it. You got it. Because you when recording, I have to make. Okay, there's two recording that I will release. One is gallery view. Okay, the other one is speaker view. But I understand that the other like competitors, communicators, they always release the only one view, get the speaker view. Right, Trisha? Yes, so we use the spotlighting. There's people in the background spotlighting the speakers. So that's why there is a speaker view when you're watching or joining us at Competitive Communicators. Uh, another thing that you as a speaker can do on, on the timers square, there's three dots in the upper right hand corner. There's an option to pin. Yes. So you can pin the timer, so you'll always be looking at the timer while you're speaking. So this is pin mode, is it? No, no. Uh, you, okay. Uh, okay, you choose Peter. Right click on Peter and choose, as choose uh, P video. Okay. So you only see Peter. Oh, okay. But recording, I need recording purpose. We need to have spotlight. How do you do that? I'm not clear on this. Okay, above the screen on the right hand corner, that is a mute and a three dot. Click on the right click on the three dot. Right click on the three dots. Okay. okay. On your why not? Screen? Why not? Why not like that? Okay. Let me let me do one thing. If, if you take your mouse and hover over no, no, somebody we'll, else's we'll, portrait. We'll, okay, we'll talk this offline after this meeting. Okay. This is grammar I received for Toastmaster International. I declare the meeting close. Wait, who is the winners? Who are okay. the award winners? Okay, before I close, let me share the poll. Okay. Okay, let's start with the table topic. Okay. There's no winner. It's a tie. Wow. It's a tie. Okay. But I will officially I will officially update your slide tomorrow evening. It really cannot be a tie, I didn't vote. Never mind. Today we are not everyone is in a bad shape. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let us continue the next one. Okay. Best be best speaker. Oh, where's TT? TT okay. just done. So now it's best speaker, right? CJ is the best prepared speaker. Okay. Okay. 
Let us go to the best event uh, drum roll. Trisha is the winner for best event tonight. Oh, that's a round of applause. Yeah. Okay. One announcement before we go, before I close the meeting. Once Toastmaster International announced the charter, we officially charter, we'll, open, we'll start to open membership to the whole world. Dennis J. Aaron Leo for Hong Kong is our member, and Aaron Leo is our club advisor as well. So, George, Trisha, the membership is of, open to you. It's the same rate as all the online tools master club. We'll talk about that offline another day. So, so let us, let me close the meeting with a gravel in my hand, fresh for Toastmaster International. And thank you and uh, have a nice day. Okay, thank you. Let's stop recording. All right. Let's Good go. night.